Here's a next example using the M algorithm. Of course, I misspelled algorithm. Um, and we're going to look at the bivariate Poisson regression model. And a quick setup if we have three independent Poisson distribution or random variables, all three independent, we're going to let theta equal the vector of parameters. And we let x equal x1 plus x3 and y equal x2 plus x3. Then we get what's called the bivariate Poisson model, or at least one rendition of it. Um, now, I'm not deriving this in this video because it's already maybe a little long. But if you search my YouTube channel for this, then I, then I give a uh, very detailed explanation how to drive that. And there's more than one way to drive it, but in... You can see the way I did it in the video. So now on to the EM algorithm. Uh, I think a lot of, lot of people would be inclined to say here, here's our joint model, and then which ends up being the likelihood function. But what is, you know, the key in the EM algorithm is to have observable variables and unobservable variables, and then separate it. But here, what's observable? There's nothing observable. If we're in the, the bivariate Poisson model, only X and Y are, and they're linear combinations of these threes. So we can't really use this one, but we can take this distribution and transform it into something that we can use. And we do that by just a linear transformation and and it's this so we let x you know be x1 plus x3 and y be y2 plus y3 and z be x3 and then we uh, back solve for x1 2 and 3 the uh, absolute value of the the determinant or the jacobian is this equals 1 then the joint density of XYZ is this and we plug those into our into here which we had on the previous page and we get this so this is what we'll use for the EM algorithm here we have observable variables and unobservable so now we can split that into observable and unobservable okay but before we do we have to calculate the likelihood so this is for one individual and then we have to sum over n individuals and that's what we get here or which ends up being the product because individuals are independent from one of each other so it's the product um, and we get this and then we to take the log likelihood we get this which is it's it's all just algebra so the natural log of this we get here uh, you know the log of this component we get that as a as a coefficient times the log of this and you can kind of go through and do it it's pretty straightforward and then once we have turned obtain the log likelihood we can come up with uh, maximum likelihood estimates and because it's pretty straightforward I'm not going to go through the algebra but if we were in this setting and we want to take the partial with respect to lambda 1 this and, and these two rows cancel out because there's no lambda 1. And then we get minus n, uh, you know, t plus this, the sum of these variables over lambda 1. And then you set it to zero, solve for lambda 1. And you get these. Which, which makes sense because if lambda 1 is a, is, is a Poisson process, and x is x1 plus x3, and then we're subtracting x3, we get a, a nice estimate for lambda 1, and, and then the similar for the others. So on to the q step. The q step is we, uh, the e step is we find this q function. We take the expected value of the log likelihood that we found on the previous page, but which 
which is, is which is this long thing and but this expectation is in regards to our missing data given our observed data and our parameters and notice the T there that we have to come up with an initial guess or initialize our pr parameters take a best guess at them so let's find this derivative Z given our observable and the parameters um, you can rewrite this as this which is um, again just using uh, probability theory so if this is a given B that's the same as uh, a given or B given a times a all over B and anyway, it's that relationship so but here Z is X3 so that's a Poisson model and if we're given Z then and Y is X2 minus Z and this is X1 minus Z so we can plug that information in here and we get this X is equal to X1 is equal to X minus Z F2 is equal to Y minus Z and that X1 and X2 are independent so we can break them apart and this is the uh, general bivariate Poisson for X and Y and this is what was given on uh, the first page so if this is the density let's find the expected value of, of this function or this random variable which is this by definition is we take every value that Z can assume and take it times its density well Z or X3 is a Poisson so it goes from 0 to infinity and so I is, is the values it can take on then it's times the density which is what we showed before now notice there's no I in this bottom piece here so it can actually be factored out and these are just three independent Poisson distributions so if we plug in that information XI is the variable XI and then we have XI factorial and we do the same for the second distribution and the third and this is all divided by the uh, bivariate Poisson X and Y um, so here a couple notes is originally we went from 0 to infinity but 0 times anything is 0 so adding 0 is sort of irrelevant so we can start at 1 and that's what we do here and then once we're here we can start bringing out constants you know that have no I so this this uh, bivariate Poisson formula can be taken out front uh, the e to the minus lambda i can be taken out front out front and here the lambda 1 x can be taken out but we're going to do it a little differently we're only we're going to take out one shy of x so lambda 1 to the x minus 1 will take out front and you'll see that in a second so if we're here um, so that comes out Oh, and we're going to take a, one of these lambda 3. So what's going to be left is lambda 3 i minus 1. And then there are the e's that we took out. And then we took out one less of the x's. And um, notice that i goes from 1 to infinity. But if it gets too big, then that, be that becomes negative and it's undefined. Well, it's actually... If I gets whatever's the minimum of X and Y before it becomes undefined. So that's what we sum to is 1 to the minimum of X and Y. And what is left over are these factorials. Um, this, this I goes into the I factorial leaving I minus 1 factorial. And then these are the same as before. And the lambdas, we have lambda 3 I minus 1, which is what that piece is. And here we left one of the lambda, you know, twos, so it's one minus i. But if you take it to the bottom, it's i minus one. We did the same for lambda. So this is what we get. But now um, i is is sort of a it's a dummy variable. It's a it, just an index. So we can change it to whatever we want. 
and we're going to change it to k, but we're going to let k equal i minus 1, which means i is equal to k plus 1. So in this formula, this will be k, this will be k, and if i is k plus 1, then we're going to have y minus 1 minus k, same here, and we're going to go from 0 to the minimum of x and y minus 1, but that minus 1 can be brought in to eat to those. And so this piece here, so the e, the, x, the lambda 2, lambda 3, and this, when we make a variable change to k, is actually a bivariate Poisson model with x minus 1 and y minus 1 used. And then we get the, the, the bivariate Poisson and the lambda 3. So this is it. This is the expected value of z. So when we calculate the expected value of z given x and y and our initial estimates of our parameters, we're going to call that zi squared. So now to calculate this q function, which ends up being linear in the z's, we can just we take the expected value in until we find a z and then and then we replace it by the zit so there's zit and we bring it in and uh, and actually whatever whatever this is it's constant in regards to lambda one two and three so technically I can't just put zit so that's a really a mistake I should have expected value of that of xi zi but it drops out when you take the the derivative with respect to lambda 1 lambda 2 or lambda 3 and then here you we replace it as zit um, zit and then that'll be constant which goes away it should be the expected value of the log of zi um, so when we maximize this this is actually maximizing just the, the same likelihood function we did before except for we're replacing zi with zit. So the m step, we get this. Um, with zit replaced instead of zi. So though, then those the, that helps us drive the next estimates, lambda 1 t plus 1, lambda 2 t plus 1, and the 3 t plus 1. So then we repeat the E step with these new estimates. Remember the E step, we had our initial guesses, then we maximized it. Now we're going to take these back into the E step, maximize again, come up with new estimates, and then keep repeating until these estimates converge. And that's the EM algorithm for the bivariate Poisson distribution. And now let me give a quick uh, illustration of this using R. Here we're looking at the EM algorithm for the bivariate Poisson distribution and we're using R, RK Ward, specifically on a Ubuntu machine. I like to load this uh, library called Extra Distribution or Extra Dist and uh, the reason is it has a built-in function for the bivariate Poisson Poisson model. Uh, we could do it ourselves, but why reinvent the wheel? And here, um, and and here, you can uh, randomly generate data from the bivariate uh, Poisson model, and then also ha it has the density for the bivariate Poisson model. Uh, here are our, our lambda estimates. Uh, this is uh, three is in regards to x one, seven is x two, and two is x three. So we'll load those, and then we kind of build this from scratch. We have three independent Poisson models with parameters A, B, and C that we determined up here. And then we uh, combine one and two and two and three into um, a, a matrix. And there's we've just generated it. So now our initial guesses for our EM algorithm, I just say 5, 5, and 5. It actually doesn't matter. It converges pretty consistently the same value. So that's it.
Uh, now this is our expected value of z. So the d is the density for the bivariate Poisson model and, and I give a matrix here but I want to subtract one if you remember from our uh, theory before and then here we divide by the bivariate Poisson model with x and y and that's our z estimate so then we take um, this of course we're going to loop it a hundred times but we take our z and we calculate our estimate for each of the parameters so lambda 1 2 our second guess for lambda 1 here's our second guess for lambda 2 and then lambda 3 is here now once we have our best guess then we take those estimates and recalculate expected value of z with our new estimates here our initial guess was 555 five, five, and then whatever they're updated to it goes in again and then we repeat I reset the second guesses with the initial and just repeat a hundred times and then let's see what we get and then I print out the guesses and here if, uh, we, our guesses should have been 3, 7, and 2 and 3, 7, and 2 it's pretty close and so here I just iterate a hundred times for the EMR algorithm and anyway that's it to keep the video short I won't do extra exam uh, examples here but if you like the video like it and, and um, subscribe so you don't miss the next one I have one or two more examples for the EM algorithm and I'm also going to give some additional theory after I finish those examples but uh, exciting stuff coming and so I will talk with you later